Example 1.7. A new college graduate has a job with Boeing Aerospace. She plans to borrow $10,000 now to help in buying a car. She has arranged to repay the entire principal plus 8% per year interest after five years. Identify the engineering economy symbols and their values for a total owed after five years. Read the problem carefully because this one is only asking us to identify the engineering economy symbols. So no need to solve this problem. We just need to identify and list what we have and the unknown. Okay, so same process as the examples before, but instead of writing the entire uh, word, like uh, original amount, end amount, interest rate, we will be using the symbols that are on slide 1-15, section 1.6. So going back to the problem, the first amount that we see here are these $10,000. Like I said, I greatly recommend that you keep on reading to find some keywords that will help you determine what symbol these $10,000 are. So you're going to see that they're borrowing the money. So this is the initial amount and it's happening now. Okay, so if that's the case, then your 10,000 are going to be Hold on. Set up my pen. Okay. So your 10,000 are going to be your P. So that's the present amount. Then it says that she has arranged to repay the entire principal, or it's kind of already telling you that this is the principal, plus 8% per year, which is the only percentage that we have, but also it does tell you straightforward that this is your interest. Okay, so we're going to be using this as your I, I equals 8% and don't forget to specify the time, so 8% per year after 5 years. Okay, so then it's telling us a time period here. What's actually telling us, telling us the number of periods because we have a year period and it's going to be after five years. So then this five right here is going to be your n. n equals to five years. What are we looking for? Okay, so we want to know, put it in black, the total owed after these five years. So if it's uh, an amount that happens later on in time, then that means that you want to know the future amount. And then again, you always list the unknown as well. Uh, uh, one thing I want to point out here, let me go back to the notes, is the difference between I and, I mean, sorry, uh, the difference between N and T. Okay, so you're going to see here that N is the total number of periods. Okay, so in that case, I mentioned that it's five years because we have the, our period is a year, okay, and we have five of them. So it's the total after. But the time, we're actually not going to be using the time per se in our calculations later on in chapter two, but we're going to be using this for our diagrams. Okay, you'll see how that works in the next section. Uh, so what time really means is the following. If you were to have five years, then your time will be each individual year. So for example, for time, you will start from year zero. Okay, then you will also have year one. You're going to have year two, year three, year four, and then the last uh, point in time that you're going to have here will be year five.
Example 1.8. Assume you borrow $2,000 now at 7% per year for 10 years and must repay the loan in equal yearly payments. Determine the symbols involved and their values. Same thing, we're only determining the symbols we do not need to solve. So let's start with the very first one. Right here, you are borrowing $2,000 and when does that happen? It's going to be now. So listing the keywords here, I have now. So if it's the initial amount that you are borrowing and it happens now, then our P is going to be equal to 2000 Then the interest rate is the only percentage that we have which is 7% per year. So we have I equals 7%, don't forget the per year. Then it says for 10 years, so we have our time period is the year and we have 10 of these, so it's gonna be our N. and must repay the loan in equal yearly payments. So here, what is our unknown? It's telling us that yes, they must repay the loan, but then the keyword is this one right here, equal yearly payments. It is not asking us for an amount in the future, it's asking us for a series of payments that will be the same amount every year. If we go back to the notes, we're going to see that the definition for A is a series of equal end of period cash flows. Okay, so let me give you an example here. You may have some subscriptions, let's say like Netflix or Spotify. Okay, so for those, when in that case, the period will be months, okay, you have to pay a monthly fee. Okay, but it will be the same every month. So that would be considered an A. Same amount every month. Okay, so some of the keywords that you will see here may be uh, annually, yearly, um, equal, annual, per year, something like that, something along those lines. That will make it an A. As long as you have the same amount repeated, every period that means that it is an A. So here the equal yearly payments will be your unknown because you want to know uh, how much uh, you're going to be paying per year in order to be able to repay the loan and they want to know it's the same amount it's going to be an equal amount so that's going to be your A it's going to be the unknown and also this is per year so it's how much you're going to be repaying per year. And just uh, for your reference here, I'm going to put this, uh, this is going to happen for 10 years. Example 1.9. On July 1st, 2008, your new employer, Ford, deposits $5,000 into your money market account as part of your employment bonus. The account pays interest at 5% per year. You expect to withdraw an equal annual amount each year for the following 10 years. Identify the symbols and their values. Okay, so we start with the $5,000 that were deposited. So we know that it's a first, uh, that's your starting amount because it's the deposit. So you're going to have P equals 5,000 into your money market account. Uh, the account pays interest. So it's telling you right away that this is the interest at 5% per year. So you have your I equals 5% year. Uh, you expect to withdraw, 
there's a keyword and equal annual amount and then on top of it each year okay so what else can it be it has to be an a because it's a series of equal payments so you don't know this one so it's going to be the unknown and don't forget to put per year for the following 10 years again it's giving you the number of periods so you're going to have 10 of these so n will be 10 years. Example 1.10. You plan to make a lump sum deposit. Lump sum means that it's a one-time uh, payment. So they're depositing the entire amount at once. A lump sum deposit of $5,000 now into an investment account that pays 6% per year and you plan to withdraw an equal end of year amount of $1,000 for five years starting next year. At the end of the sixth year, you plan to close your account by withdrawing the remaining money. Define the engineering economy symbols involved. Okay, so let's start. We have uh, the $5,000, yeah, these $5,000 here. Okay, and this occurs now. Okay, so that's your starting amount. So we're gonna do, oops. okay, so your P equals 5,000. Into an investment account that pays 6% per year, that's your I. and you plan to withdraw an equal end of year amount of $1,000 for five years. So you have your keyword equal, let me make it with the straight line, uh, equal end of year amount, so that's your keyword, and this is gonna be 5000 for five years starting next year so those 1000 are going to be your A I'm going to leave the five years um, on the side for now because then it says at the end of the sixth year, the sixth year, you plan to close your account by withdrawing the remaining money. Okay, so here, well, let me uh, underline this. It says that you must withdraw the remaining money. So obviously, you want to know how much that remaining money will be. So here, you're going to have, oh, for the 1,000 I forgot to add per year, sorry, because it's annual. Okay, going back. Withdraw the remaining money. So you want to know how much money you're going to have at the very end. So after you deposit it, then you withdraw, uh, you withdraw the 1,000 for five years. How much money you're going to have next year when you plan to close your, um, your account? So you are looking for your F. Now, what about the N? Okay, because here we see that you have, it mentions five years, and then it mentions a sixth year. So what would your N be? Would it be five or would it be six? I'll give you about five seconds for you to think about it. Go. Those of you who said five years, you're correct. Those of you who said six years, you're also correct. Okay, so why is this? If you recall from the previous examples, 
that we worked out uh, to identify the symbols. So there were examples 1.7, 1.8, and 1.9. On those examples, you only had two of the capital uh, or the uppercase symbols. In this case, we have three of them. So in the problems, you only need two of the uppercase symbols. Let me show you the symbols. Okay, because these uppercase symbols, the P, the F, and the A, are actually the ones that deal with the money. Okay, so we need to have at least two of these in the problem, even if one is given and the other one is an unknown, in order to be able to solve it. Okay, so in this case, what T is time, uh, N is uh, the number of periods in time, and I, lowercase i, will be a rate. So most of the time, these lower cases are used for rates or other uh, than money. So you need to have at least two of these in order to be uh, able to solve the problem later on, you'll see in chapter two. But in this particular problem, we have all three of them. We have P, F, and A present. Because they don't have to be given as long as they are present. So we have P, A, and F. So therefore, in this case, we're going to have two Ns. Okay. Uh, when we move on to the next section, I'll come back to this and I'll uh, explain it with a diagram that'll make more sense. But for now, just know that we're going to have an N of five years. Okay, for A, because you will be withdrawing those $1,000 for five years, and we're going to have an N of six years for F, because your F will appear at the end of the sixth year when you're going to withdraw the remaining money and close your account.